Roses, roses, roses. We're gonna go rose nutty today. We're gonna paint some beautiful roses, but the main thing we're gonna learn about this, this particular painting is we're gonna paint some ghost leaves behind the roses. And they're gonna be painted in shades of gray and some of them will be very light and some will be a little darker and they'll be just sort of, sort of dancing around the roses. Yeah, woo! I'm Gary Jenkins and welcome to the Jenkins Art Studio. Let's take a look at the painting that I'm gonna be working from and you're gonna be able to see those gray leaves back there. Actually, I think I'm gonna put a few more gray leaves back there to show you a little bit more about about how gray works with color. You see, gray is a neutral color. It doesn't care what's around it, but gray makes color bounce off the canvas. And that's the main uh, lesson for today. The canvas is an 18 by 24, and I have it already prepared with some stuff on here. This background is made up of white with a touch of sienna and a touch of cad red light, just a touch. That's what's in here. Then you take that same mixture that's in here and add some green and sienna, and that's how we get this little bit of an antique edge. Okay, let's come down to the palette and let's get our rose started. First of all, we'll take a touch of medium. This brush is a bright brush. It's a number 18, and it's very soft hair. We don't want to use anything that is uh, stiff hair. This is actually badger hair here. We're going to take some of this, and let's take a little pink, and we're going to find we have a rose that's going to go, oh, someplace in here where it spirals around, and we're going to have a little rose in there. And we find our roses first, because so we don't get a lot of our, you know, our dark color in where the rose is going to go. There's the face of the rose, there's the belly, and a little bit indicating some of the outside petals. We keep this part very flexible and very loose and free. Now we're going to go in behind it and we're going to come down to the palette. Here we have, so this is black, a touch of white, and a touch of green. That's what's in here. Now I'm going to reach over and pick up some white way over on the other side. And I'm going to put that over here. So I end up with another lighter value. So we have this uh, value and we have this. Okay, a value means just the darkness or the lightness of a color. We're going to take this go uh, gray on up here and we're going to find some leaves up here. We're going to find another, notice how the brush is down. You wiggle, wiggle, and come to a point. And we're going to find some of these. I'm going to put a few more leaves in this one than what we have in the painting that I'm working from. So this is the darkest gray that I have down on the palette. So we're going to put this in. Darkest right next to where the flowers are so that this dark gray will pop those roses off the canvas. Now that's our real dark gray. Now I'm going to wipe the brush and come down and pick up a lighter gray. Now this lighter gray will appear, I'm going to put a little more white with that, appear to go to recede into the background because it's lighter than this. So you see how the dark comes towards you and the light uh, gray down light leaves recede. So we'll have some of those back here just to give the illusion they're kind of called, they're called ghost leaves. They're just barely there. Now notice the action. We have some leaves flipping this way and some flipping the other. We don't want them all going just one way. We have a larger leaf down here. This is with our, our lightest gray. And we indicate a leaf in here. Very, very pale leaf. We have another one that'll be coming in here. Wiggle your color in the middle angle towards the back. We have another one there. Now I'm going to go into the darker. Oh, wait a minute. We've got some stems. <laughs> We're going to take our green and sienna. Um, and let's put a couple stems in, in here. Well, got lucky. I got one side light and one side dark. Don't know how that happened. And we have little thorns on there. And that's you push down and pull up, push down and pull up, push down and pull up. We get a little feeling of thorns. And to make one of those stems recede, I've just went down and picked up some gray. 
Let's put a little white on top of that. That gray, white, 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 white. And we're going to take that and make a lighter gray to help try to make that one recede. See, that looks like it's farther back than that. This is dark. That's a little lighter. And maybe something coming off of here. And we'll have our darker, um, darker gray. I keep wanting to call it green. Because <laughs> I'm painting leaves, I'm saying my mind says they're green, but we're not painting them green. So we have that gray, and we have another gray down here. You see that go in? Actually, there's no color on them. We might put a little color on them later. Don't know. And we might have another one back here. So you wiggle color down the middle, angle your stroke, and in it goes. Now out of here, over the top of that gray, let's come down the palette. This is where we really get juicy. <laughs> really, really get color going. We've got a rose color. we got green and sienna. No medium. And we're going to come in here. And we're going to come out of there. Very skinny stem. Oh, let's put that in. Let's get a little more rose and crimson mixed together. Yes, we want a little more red in there. And there. Now we're cooking. And we go right on top of the gray leaves. So now this color is going to force. We take a little red and crimson. This color going on top will force the gray leaves to go farther on back, way back into the back. So we get some dimension to the painting. It keeps the painting from being flat. Up on the top, we're going to take some uh, crimson and green, come up to the top, and we'll get a couple of these wonderful dark wiggle wiggle leaves up here. And again, as soon as the dark goes in, you can, I'll try to keep my hand out of there. You can see the, uh, how we, this recedes into the background. Let's take a little crimson and red. And maybe we'll get some of that kind of autumn color going. A little red in there, that looks good. Maybe a little shot over here. Boy, we better get on those roses. <laughs> well, there you go. That's how you paint those little ghosty leaves painting, uh, jumping around the back. Let's get on those roses. We're going to clean our brush off, get rid of all that gray that's on there. And let's pick up a color that's just plain called rose. Wonderful color, rose. And we're going to take that and come on up. And remember, we have to put a base tone in first before we can show anything. And this is thin, guys. Don't put. I see a lot of people in our workshops putting this base tone in very thick. So don't do that. <laughs> in it goes. Watch your outside edge. It's kind of ragged. We'll leave that one alone. We'll jump down to the next one. A little touch of medium. This time we'll take some ochre and maybe a touch of yellow medium and ochre mixed together. And up it goes. Oh, and there's a little red in there left over from the flower up yonder. <laughs> Get it in. Doesn't matter. In it goes. Let it overlap the other rows. Be free and be loose. And don't tighten up. Paint till you drop. <laughs> this kind of stuff takes practice. You have to paint at least 100 roses before you really get to a point of knowing what it's all about. And instead of jumping right into painting, why don't you try going out, getting a sketchbook, and sketching flowers. Learn how to draw. So many people try to paint before they learn how to draw. And drawing is so important. So sketch flowers as often as you can. We're going to come back up here and take our crimson, our wonderful dark crimson, and find that center. And we'll sort of throw, find some other darks jumping around, which, and a dark over here, which is going to help separate the back rows from the front rows. All right, now she's ready to go. Now look at this laying. Look at, just look at that. We haven't done anything. And take a look at it for a minute. It looks like a rose already, doesn't it? What did we do? We blocked the flower in, put a couple darks, and there it is. Why does that look like a rose? Because the few strokes we have on there are meaningful. They're in a certain area for a certain reason. And that's why your mind's eye says, yes, that's a rose 
because these strokes are running in the proper direction, which makes our job easier when it comes to picking petals out. Now here's some rose and white. We're going to come in here and come right inside and pick out some petals way inside. There's a petal there, a petal there. And you beginners out there, don't be intimidated by this stuff. You can do it. It takes a little practice. But I tell you, if I'm going to practice and learn something, I want to learn something that's worthwhile. I want to learn I want to learn the right way to do things. I don't, don't show me some Mickey Mouse little project and call it painting. If you cut your finger, it doesn't make you a, and you put a Band-Aid on it, it doesn't make you a doctor. There's so many Mickey Mouse paintings out there. So try this stuff. And if you win, oh boy, what you end up with is so far superior to anything else. And if you're going to spend your valuable time, let's, let's go for it. Yes. Now, I'm building this out, petal by petal. Sometimes we have what we call foreshortened petals. That's just the side of the brush. Other times we have petals that you see the flat of the petal. All right, there's the flat. What's the big deal? There it is. Another petal swooping down here. That's why you need, even silk roses are wonderful. The way they're making them nowadays, the anatomy of the flower is right there. If you're lucky enough to have real roses, we have a garden that, uh, in our backyard where we have at least a hundred rose bushes and uh, that's where I go out and photograph. Actually Catherine goes out and photographs. Catherine takes all the pictures. And we do, we live in Ashland, Oregon which it's a wonderful town that's nestled in the mountains and it has roses all over the place and Catherine and I go out and photograph roses and there you can see we're out there walking around oh there's my hat I wondered what happened to my cowboy hat I miss my hat <laughs> well I must have found something yeah and there's you see this is what it takes you get out there have a stroll around, have a, a nice, fun, leisurely day, and, and, and photograph those flowers, bring them home, and paint them. Yes. And if you don't paint them, who cares? You had a great day doing some photography. Matter of fact, I'm going to steal a little time here. Down, Catherine is working on something. Catherine takes all the photos. I take a few, but she takes most of them. We're working on an idea, and Catherine's do, doing a show for you, where she's taking, oh, there goes my flowers. She's taking uh, some real roses, real photography. These are photographs. <laughs> this is not painted here. These two roses are photos. She went in behind and painted the background in, okay? Then we of course, well, we, let me back up here a little bit. The photograph was enlarged to an 8 by 10, put behind a mat. Then she went in and painted behind it and then brought the picture out over the mat. Look at the little star she put in there. Wonderful. Let's back up so we, sh we can see the whole thing a little bit. You, you look at that. Is that cool? So we're combining photography and painting together into one painting. Give me a break, guys. Give me a break. All those photos you have at home you don't know what to do with, take them to your copy place, have them blown up to an 8x10, go out and have some mats cut, put that photo behind it, paint the backgrounds out on the mat, and you will have a, you'll have a ball. It'll open up a whole new career for you. And if you're out there selling your work, you, they're going to go crazy. I better get on with this or we'll have one flower and, and one just blocked in. <laughs> Wonder if they couldn't get away with that. I don't think so. Let's take a little white and yellow. Cad yellow medium. And we're going to take and pick a petal out of here. Yes. I get off on these little tangents about stuff. See, painting, there's more to painting than just painting on canvas. It's like that photo idea is just fantastic. We're just going to, we're going to do a lot more with that kind of stuff. Yes. I did one show where I, I did a, uh, 
took a photo of one of my paintings and had an 8x10. I, I have a computer where I just blow them up in my computer. I scan them in and uh, print them out. They even have some wonderful paper now that's uh, canvas paper. You print them out on canvas paper and put a mat around them and paint them out. If you're showing it outdoor shows, it's fantastic. Okay, now we're going to get some. Get this guy going here. And we got some petals out here. And I really need more time. We need an hour up here <laughs> to really get really into it. Because sometimes we have to rush, and that's not fair to you guys. But all the detail and everything will be in our painting packet, so uh, along with patterns and detail instructions for you. Because I don't have a chance to get it all up here. And we have a little blank spot right in there. And we'll get that in. Now remember, there's all kinds of surfaces you can paint on. We paint on uh, furniture. We paint on, uh, actually, Catherine just finished doing a, uh, a cover. We have this fireplace at the house, and she painted this uh, cover to go in front of it. Let me show you this. <laughs> this goes, it's in front of, it's a screen. Oh, I knew I'd find the word. See? Let's come in real close on that screen. That is cool looking. Look at the flowers. That's a screen in front of our wood-burning fireplace. And Catherine made that. Well, I made the wood. That's just made out of plywood, three pieces of plywood. The outside is gold leaf. Catherine did all that. And she went in and did the painting. Is that great? So you could do the same technique on furniture. Here's another one. Let me show you this one. It doesn't show up too well. But it'll give you another idea of a piece of uh, furniture with some painting on it. Cool. Uh, look at the stripes on there. Neato. And I wanted to show you something else. Look at this rose. This was in our garden. This is cool. Look at that. It's a rose with two centers. It's, it's, it's twins. We got twins. <laughs> we had this blown up into an 8 by 10 and we have this framed in our living room. Isn't that neat? Little things. It's cool. Life's great. It's the little things that are important. Let's come over here and bring another nice large rose leaf out here. Yes. And another one coming out. Now I have some pink on the brush, but who cares? Looks great. Play around and experiment. You know, I keep telling you, let that little child out. The little child that's in all of us that wants to play. We have a little bud up here. Boy, let's see if we can get that in before they, they say, get off of here. <laughs> let's come up here and get a little bud. We have a little round top, round top, ragged top, round bottom. And then we come down. And we're going to pick up, let's take our green and put a little touch of yellow with it. Now watch how we load the brush up. I load up both sides of the brush. I load up this side, and then I'll take the brush and turn it over and load up the other side. You see? So when I'm painting and I'm stroking along, and I do this so fast you don't see me do it, I run out of paint on one side, I turn the brush over, and I use the paint on the other side. That's why it looks like I get so much out of one loading. Yeah, but you see me turn it. You don't see me turn it. It's so fast. Now, oh, I just left out one of my secrets. <laughs> and here comes another one up here. Turn and twist. And I also want to thank all you guys out there, everybody in Florida and Connecticut, New Jersey, uh, Virginia, Texas, and Louisiana. Oh, you guys out in Louisiana are fantastic for all your support over the years. You just have been great. And it's because of you that Catherine and I are able to come back on the air for you. It's without your support, we would be bye-bye. Yeah. And when your stations, when it comes pledge time, guys, in your local station, ask for money. Send in a pledge because it's your money that helps keep us and other shows on your PBS channel on the air. And don't think we don't appreciate your support, because we do. Look at that little bud. Yes. 
Now, right down in this area, way down in here, in order to pop these roses out a little bit more, watch what happens. We're going to take some green and sienna. Watch what happens when we close that up. Close it up. Now, you see that dark. And now, we're going to take that dark. Let's make it a leaf coming out of there because you just can't leave your dark hanging. And a little more green and sienna. And maybe we'll have another leaf, dark leaf, coming out of here. Now, any time you bring a leaf up next to a flower, you have to go in and bring those petals back out over. Mm-hmm so that the leaves go underneath. Let's take a look at that rose. We have a little time now. And I'm using good old oil paint. Sometimes I forget to tell you up here. And these are pastel roses. And please, if you're going to call us and want to ask questions, refer to the show number at the end of the show. So we'll know which show you're watching. Now let's take a little more white. Ooh, let's get a little more on there and really punch that out. Now, this is adding the wonderful light, wonderful highlights. You see it? Don't run it all the way across the rose, because the, the light dances from petal to petal. It sort of hits in a spot, and then it gets, it, it's lost. Maybe it hits here. Look at that little bit of light. A little bit of light there. We're turning the lights on here. But you see how just a little bit goes a long way. And if you, if you covered the whole thing, it would lose, it would lose the beautiful feeling of light. Because if you fill the whole thing in with white, you no longer have light. You simply have a white rose with no lights and darks. Look at the light up there. Yes, this, you have to restrain yourself. Restrain yourself. <laughs> you have to be cool. Yes, as the kids say today, be cool. Or is that word gone? I'm getting so old, I don't know anymore. I say, isn't that cool? And they go, oh, that word's not used anymore. Drives, you, drives an old man crazy. Can't keep up with all the sayings. Here's a little pink. Let's take a little pink and add to, look at that, a little pink on the edge of that petal here, and a little pink over here. Yes, and don't forget out there, these are very soft brushes, and you want these brushes to last you a long time, so you have to use brush conditioning oil, because these, this is animal hair we have up here. If you let your brushes dry out, they start, they, they flare out, and they're shot. So you have to keep what the pr brush conditioning oil does, it just keeps the hairs moist, keeps them wet so that when you're ready to paint, they're ready to go and it keeps that chisel edge. Once these dry out, they're gone. So what we're doing is keeping the oil in the hair. It's just like human hair. If you don't keep it oiled and keep it conditioned, this is what happens. Yes, it's gone bye-bye. <laughs> so keep those brushes conditioned out there. Let's take a look and see how we did here. I'm going to add just a, got a little bit of time. I'm going to come up here, and there, this is what we want. We want to reach for the stars, guys. Reach up there and let it happen. I think we got a good painting here. I think we're really cooking. Maybe another little stem right in there. Yes. Okay, well, let's go rose nutty out there. Let's take all those photos and get those paints and brushes out and have at it. Thanks for watching, and again, guys, thanks for your support out there. And don't forget to stop and smell those roses along the way. God be with you, and I'll see you next time.